my name is Stephanie Buffamonte from Old Westbury TV. I'm inside of the Student Union at SUNY Old Westbury, where they just had a book get-together featuring Christopher Hobson and Carol Quirk. I got the opportunity to speak with Carol Quirk about her newly published book. The title of the book is Eyes on Labor, News, Photography, and America's Working Class. And uh, the book explores the ways in which photographs of labor, specifically news photography, as you see in the subtitle, uh, represented er, organized labor from the 1930s, more or less, to the 1950s. I thought it was very interesting to get to hear, I think, a new perspective of the images and what they tell us of those times, and um, Professor Hobson's presentation of Largely unheard voices, I thought was really a wonderful thing for all of us to hear about and to open up another way to look at things that we've missed that we need to know more about. I also got the chance to speak with Christopher Hobson about his newly published book. The title of the book is The Mount of Vision. Subtitle is African American Prophetic Tradition, 1800 to 1950. And it's talking about uses of biblical prophecy tradition, uh, tr traditions by African American ministers and others, but primarily in the religious context, to confront and challenge the United States. I thought that it was very informative. Um, it was interesting topics that were covered, and it was uh, intellectual experience. In 1930s, 1940s, 1950s America, for them to say that African Americans should share a stage, should uh, be playing in the same band, should be sitting next to one another, that was a radical act. People began to focus in on the prophetic tradition in the Bible, primarily in the Old Testament, which after all was a way of warning Israel that it had gone off track and that God was going to deal with it very sternly if it didn't get back on track. And people took those ideas, developed them into a tradition of condemnation of the American, what they saw as the American sins of slavery and racism. They were absolutely certain that God condemned those sins. I thought it was very insightful, it was very knowledgeable. I got the statistics and changes from later decades to now about how it's become more diverse as far as before when it was predominantly Caucasian. What role was played by African American religion and particularly what I'm calling the African American prophetic tradition yes, in religion in the struggles that led very slowly over a couple of centuries to uh, a perhaps slightly more equal but I would say slightly more equal, United States. We know Carol Quirk because we took a class with her. I was vitally interested in how labor unions interacted and actually grew because photography was being used. I, I thought I knew a lot about unions because I grew up uh, very much in the union field, and, uh, but I didn't really know all the things that she told us about. This union, uh, developed 30,000 negatives over the course of their history. In the mid-1930s, uh, we can look at the ways that unions, but also corporations, took advantage of the camera, which was, you know, it had been around for quite some time at this point, maybe 80 years, but photojournalism wasn't quite around, and so they're using the camera, they're using the photograph in really innovative new ways uh, to either uh, demand change or perhaps to try to retard change. People called themselves the New Voices photo staff. They saw themselves as distinct from the Camler Club members who were doing kind of artsy shots. And the folks on the New Voices photo staff were like, no, we have a serious mission. Uh, we're documenting the life of our union. I liked the book event, actually. Uh, they talked about a lot of stuff that I didn't really know about. I didn't know about the Alexander Crummel that Hobson brought up. I didn't know about the labor union that Professor Quirk brought up. So I did learn quite a bit. I wanted to tell this story that I saw in life that no one else had uh, described. What I would tell students or aspiring writers at Old Westbury or any place else is if you have an idea, run with it. This has been Stephanie Buffmonti, Old W TV.